And the dispersion letters can also be um trans can also be um transported using a matrix. And in a dipole, it will change the dispersion and the dispersion gradient. But what's important is here in a drift space, if let's say a drift space is defined and there's no magnetic component, in a drift space, the dispersion is only transported linearly, which means the gradient will always remain the same, constant. And with this knowledge, right, we actually propose a way to, you know, um, to measure a dispersion in a clinic. Because typically in, in an accelerator, um, it's actually very difficult to do dispersion measurement. I mean, sometimes you have to um, tune your magnetic field, your manex or your you know, RF um, to actually get the kind of uh, deviations to and to measure the spot position deviations. And all these things are actually not very easy to do in the clinical proton system. But over here, we propose a method to measure dispersion in a clinical system. So first of all, <clears throat> in proton therapy, the range of the proton can be related to energy of proton using the brad kleeman relationship. And if you do set up some simple uh, algebra, algebra from here, and differentiation and so on. You notice that delta R right, can in fact be related to a delta POP, which means that if there's a momentum errors in, in, in the proton beam, in the extracted proton beam, then it will translate to a range errors. And using this knowledge, if we can measure the range error throughout the spin, then we will have a way to measure the momentum errors. So, so at this stage, we, we have a way to measure delta POP. Uh, to get a dispersion, we need two parts. We need a delta POP and we also need a delta X. And to, con and to get delta X, we have, uh, we have two ways of doing so. First, the log file from the profile monitor and the SPM actually contains spot position deviation within the spill. So this by itself natively already gives us the delta X. And at the ISO center, we will put us, and at the ISO center, we will put a scintillation detector to measure the spot position deviations. And with this, we are able to measure three different spot position deviations uh, in the PRM, SPM, and the ISO center. And then with the range measurements, with the delta R, with the range measurement or the delta R measurement, you will get the momentum errors. So with delta X and delta P, we will be able to get the um, dispersion across at PRM, SPM, and the ISO center. And as um, mentioned earlier, if this is a drift space, which it is. And because we are not using, there's no scanning, we are not, uh, the, the process is only directed at the isocenter. Then the dispersion at PRM, SPM, and isocenter should all lie along a straight line. And these are the instruments that we are using to measure the, uh, I mean, the range drift and the spot position drift at the isocenter. So it's a SRV 4000, it's a scintillation detector. And then there's a mirror and there's also a, um, CMOS camera. So, and then it has, actually has a nice accessory known as a Ranger 300. So, this is actually an entire scintillation block. And it can do a time lapse, um, it can do a time lapse uh, proton range measurements. And yeah, and these, are, these are the two tools that we use. And these are set up. So, we actually measured using the Ranger and gantry 90 degree and gantry 0 degree. And we also measure the spot position um, drift at gantry 90 degree and 0 degree. So we, are, we do a 0 0.2 second sampling time. And then to show that um, the ranger that we have is actually suitable for measuring the range errors, we actually do this very simple measurement using plastic of, the, of about 50 microns. We show that the ranger is able to detect a range difference of um, down to 0 0.1 millimeters. So the range is certainly um, sensitive enough to measure the delta R of R. So these are some of our results. So at 168.0 MeV, you can see that the range across the spew actually slightly dropped across the spew and, and it's actually kind of reproducible. Like, across all the different spews that we have, the range actually drops slightly. And when you go to gantry 90, the range, you also get a similar measurements. And if you look at the SPM and the PRM positional deviations, you can see, also see the, the drift in the positions. So in gantry 0 degree, the drift is in the x direction, whereas in gantry 90, is the drift is in the y direction. This is due to the precession of the phase space. And then when we do at 107 degrees, we can actually see a more um, prominent uh, range drop across this field for both gantry 0 and gantry 90 degree. And then for spot position um, measurements, um, the spot position at 
um, the ISO center is shown in the top plot for both um, and for both these two figures. And from here, you can see that um, sometimes the spot position deviation will actually go in the opposite direction to the uh, spot position deviations in the SPM PRM. The idea is because if the dispersion has a zero crossing between the um, SPM and the ISO center, then the spot drift will actually drift in opposite direction at the SPM and at, and at the ISO center. So this is due to a zero crossing. And also we have uh, very, very similar measures as well in the spot position um, deviation. Okay, so with this data that we have, right, we actually get the uh, dispersion at the PRM, SPM, and ISO, PRM, SPM, and ISO for both energies. Actually, we did for all the nine energies, but I just showed uh, these two energies just um, to show the idea. And you can see that indeed, right, these three points does lie along a straight line. And Typically, there's no reason to expect that <clears throat> gantry zero and gantry 90s, the dispersion profile should be the same because the bending magnet, um, the current is actually tuned kind of differently um, based on the gantry angles in, in the Hitachi system. So uh, uh, everything is not entirely the same. And then if we take a look at the maximum range error that we have um, in, our, in these measurements, we can see that most of the range errors that we have is less than 0 0.3 millimeters. And from TG224, which is um, the kind which is the equivalent of TG142 for, for, for photon for photon QA. So TG204 is a, is a QA report for the uh, proton therapy. And the acceptance, the tolerance limit for the range errors is um, one millimeter in daily and monthly QA. So we are actually way within this tolerance limit. And the maximum delta P over P that we register is everything is less than 0.08%. So this is good. And he actually promised us that you know that uh, I mean the data POP should be less than 0.2%. So we are way within the Hitachi limit as well. And this is a dispersion measure at the ISO center and also at the SPM. So um, in general, they are not the same across all the different gantry angles. And here's the dispersion gradient. Okay. So one good thing about this is so after doing these measurements, at the very start, when when they are commissioning. Uh, we found that the flatness of the beam is actually not good as shown by the red color dots here. It's actually four and um, slightly less than six percent. So it's actually it's not it, the um, the flatness is not good. And when we do a dispersion measurement, which is shown by the magenta and the black line, we show the matter of the dispersion is pretty high. So when we show Hitachi this, we say, hey, can you tune the beam again and then get the dispersion down? And they did. So after tuning, the uh, we actually get the dispersion shown by the red and the blue line and the mantle is definitely lower and what is clear is after tuning the flatness of the beam also improves everything is better than three percent so i mean for us showing the dispersion measurement all these things um, does help in getting convincing the hitachi engineer to do something about the tuning to get the dispersion down so in the end we get a bet better beam qualities and better treatment plan for the patients so <clears throat> in conclusion, so we think that it's important to understand and quantify the dispersion system during commissioning. I mean, you don't have to do it as a QA, as a periodic QA. I mean, it's very time consuming, but at least it should be understood uh, first uh, during the commission, first time during commissioning. And such tests are currently not covered by TG224. And as mentioned, the flatness can be a good surrogate QA as shown here. So when, at, at, at the start, when the beam is actually not very flat, when there's a dispersion and the this spot position drift during the spill, we get spot profile like this. I mean, we get spot profile like this. It, it looks pretty bad. And you, you can use this to kind of gauge the intra spill um, spot position deviation, but um, it's not a quantitative man, uh, ways to measure this version. And also to not a quantitative, quantitative way to measure spot position deviation as well. And then la uh, last point is the intra spill spot drift is. Um, Chances are it, is that, uh, it has a minimal clinical impact because at most during the uh, in realistic clinical treatments at the SOBP the spot width is about uh, four millimeters to five millimeters in water. So um sigma. So with this spot width, right? If let's say you have a 0.5 millimeter spot drift, it doesn't uh, change the dose distribution much. So it has minimal clinical impact. And lastly, nonetheless, the main problem is that. If you have dispersive beams and yet, and if induced those fluctuations during your absolute or reference oscillatory measurement, 
you could introduce a wrong um, input data into a TPS, and this will have a um, far-reaching consequence to your to, your, to, to the patients. So this is a part where we think that it's important to do this. That's why it's important to do this once during your commissioning. And the reference condition for the uh, PBS in revised TR three it may not be feasible in this situation because, as we mentioned, even even with this uh, rectangular spot grid, right? With these fluctuations, you cannot do a very reliable dosimetry. So, but again, um, there are still um, other promising way forward. So, there are several research groups that show that it's possible to do those area product measurements using a large area ionization chambers. So, there are a couple of work out there, and we think and and uh, as shown here, it's possible. Ideally, mm -hmm. uh, using reciprocity theorems, these two conditions should be able to give very similar uh, DAP uh, measurements. And with practice chamber with a single spot, the good thing is that it's insensitive to any spot positional drift. And uh, we think that this uh, will be a promising step forward to kind of um, overcome this problem. Yeah, that's the end of my presentation. Okay, thank you very much, Chang uh, We have updated a lot about the importance of the dispersion. Uh, it, it's something equivalent to flatness for the photon beam, but it's much more yeah. complicated. Uh, please send your question to q and A if you have any on Hong Chi's talk. Next, I'd like to listen to uh, Dr. Chore Annam. Uh, Chore, now uh, it's your. Can you share screen? Okay, thank you. Dr. Hong, can, can, can you share? share your screen first?